الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم ولا آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل جاء الحق وذاق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهقا قال رب شحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأرض من لساني يفقه قولي I welcome all brothers and sisters with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Meaning, the peace, blessings, and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of my talk is media and Islam, war or peace. Media by definition is means of mass communication. Media is means of mass communication. And Islam is derived from the word salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word slim which means to submit your will to the will of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to the will of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, we have to agree that media is one of the most important tool, or rather you can say, today media is one of the most important weapon. This media can convert black to white. It can change day into night. It can convert a hero into a villain and a villain into a hero. This media, means of mass communications, can be broadly classified under four methods. First, we have the print media. The second type of media is the audio media. The third type of media is the video media. And the fourth type of media is the computer media, the ID technology. Today, we know that the international media, whether it be the print media, the audio media, the video media, or the computer media, the IT technology, whether it be the international newspapers, international magazines, radio broadcasts, stations, websites or the television satellite channels, we find on the international media that there is a propaganda about Islam. We find that they are bombarding misinformation about Islam. We find that there are various misconceptions that has been spread on this international media. Today, the international media says that Muslims are extremists. I say yes, I am an extremist. I am extremely kind, I am extremely merciful, I am extremely just, I am extremely honest. What's wrong in being extremely kind, extremely merciful, extremely honest, extremely just? What's wrong? Can any human being tell me that being extremely honest is wrong? Can any human being point out to me that being extremely just is bad? The Quran says we have to be extremely honest. We can't be partly honest. If he is my friend, I am honest. If he is my enemy, I am not honest. We have to be honest and just with everyone. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 2, not 8, Enter into Islam wholeheartedly. So what's wrong in being an extremist? But we have to be extremists in the right direction. We should not be extremists in the wrong direction. We should not be merciless. We should not be violent. But we should be extremists in the right direction. That's what the Quran says. But unfortunately we Muslims, we go in the defense. Oh, I am not an extremist. I am not a fundamentalist. Turn the tables over. Today, Muslims are labeled as terrorists by the international media. I say, every Muslim should be a terrorist. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist by definition is a person who causes terror. Whenever a robber sees a policeman, he is terrified. So for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. So in this context, whenever a robber, whenever a thief, whenever a rapist, whenever any antisocial element looks at a Muslim, he should be terrified. We should terrify the anti-social elements of the society. That's what the Quran says in Surah Al-Fal, chapter 8, verse 60. Cause terror into the hearts of the anti-social elements of the society. I know the, today the word terrorist is commonly used for terrorizing any innocent human being. So in this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. He should, he should, he should selectively terrorize the robber, the thief, the rapist. We should terrify the antisocial elements, then only we can have peace in this world. Many a times, two different labels are given for the same activity to the same individual. For example, about 70 years ago, when India got its freedom, the Britishers were ruling India. There were many Indians who were fighting for their freedom of the country. These people by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But we, the common Indians, we called them as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If you agree with the view of the British government that they had the right to rule over us, rule over India, then you have to call these people as terrorists. 
But if, but if you agree with the view of the common Indian that the Britishers came to India to do business, they have no right to rule over us, then you have to call these people as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And there are multiple such examples in world history. In the 18th century, we know of the American Revolution. They were, the Britishers were ruling America. There were many Americans who were fighting for the freedom of their country. In 1776, the America got its freedom. And at the top of the line was Benjamin Franklin, George Washington. They were called as terrorist number one by the British government. The person who was called as terrorist number one, George Washington, later on he becomes the president of USA. Imagine, terrorist number one becomes the president of USA. And he is the example for all the presidents to follow, including George Bush. This is media. Terrorist number one becomes the president of USA, the country which we look upon. USA name comes over oh, most advanced country in the world. Who was the person who was the first president? A terrorist. We have the example of Nelson Mandela. Before New South Africa was formed, when South Africa was relieved from the white apartheid government, Nelson Mandela, he was imprisoned for 25 years. Nelson Mandela by the white apartheid government, he was imprisoned for 25 years. He was called as terrorist number one by the white apartheid government. When South, New South Africa got its freedom, he was made the president of New South Africa. And later on, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. And he doesn't get a Nobel Prize for Peace, know that he, for a new activity. He was a terrorist first, he did a good job and a bad person and become a good No, no. Same activity for which he was called as terrorist number one. After a few years, he get the Nobel Prize for Peace. Same activity for which he was imprisoned for 25 years. He was called as terrorist. For the same activity, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. This is media. We know when Hitler was invading Europe, many countries resisted. Even France, they resisted. These French people, by the Germans, they were called as terrorists. This is the media. This is how the media paints the picture. This is how the media can convert black to white, day into night, hero into a villain and a villain into a hero. Unfortunately, unfortunately we Muslims, we are way behind. We should know how to turn the tables over. It's mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 81. وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقْ وَضَحَقَ الْبَاطِلْ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ لَهُ Say, truth has arrived and falsehood perished. Falsehood by its nature bound to perish. With this I conclude my talk. وَأَقْرُضْ دَعْوَانَ لِلْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ